Campbell's Tomato Juice presents... George Burns with Gracie Allen. And Ted Husing and Milton Watson. With Jack Bernard and his famous orchestra. Again. I'm so thrilled that I can hardly speak and while we were... Gracie, we've only been away two weeks. Well, I know it, but it's the same old New York. Yes. You know, I said to myself this morning as I was riding uptown on the M, I said to myself... You were, you were riding uptown on the M? Well, sure, I like the M much better than subway. So I said Gracie, to myself... Gracie, it's not the M, it's the L. Well, I know, but I don't like to say L on the radio. <laughs> Well, it's kind of nice to be back in New York again. Oh, yes. I've never had such a welcome home in my life. Mm. I was certainly thrilled when I heard those whistles blowing. They, you know, uh, I never they blew expected... whistles for us? Oh, sure, but what I can't understand is we got in the tent, yeah. and they didn't blow the whistles until 12 o'clock. Tracy, those were lunch whistles. Oh, that'd be a silly way, George. You never heard of eating whistles for lunch? <laughs> uh, they're delicious with ketchup. Now, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can't stop me tonight. Yeah, no, and my brother, you know, he got so excited that he threw a streetcar right through a plate glass window. Your brother picked up a streetcar and threw it through a plate glass window? Yes. Tracy, and... do you know how much a streetcar weighs? Certainly, three tons. And... Three, uh, three tons? Yeah, up tons and down tons. Up, <laughs> up tons and down tons? Yeah. But where's the other ton? Mm, leading the band. Leading, um, <laughs> leading the band. My <laughs> like car. Hey, wait, wait, George. Yes? For two whole weeks while you've been away, I haven't made one single announcement about Campbell's. Okay. Not once have I stepped up to the microphone to tell the world the famous Campbell slogan. Well, I'll tell him about it, Ted. Oh, thank you. And, and ladies and gentlemen, Ted Deason says, if you're using Campbell's tomato juice, you're using the best Campbell's tomato juice in the world. On account of you're using the same tomato juice that Deason is using. <laughs> that, uh, that using is using? George, I juice got through telling him that. Oh, you juice got through. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Ed, I'll take it for you. All right. And I won't have to sell Campbell's tomato juice on a piece of paper. I've got it in my head. Well, Dad, right. if, if you can't have brains in your head, then I guess Campbell's tomato juice is the next best thing. Uh, thanks. <laughs> say, say, Gracie, it's all I can do to control myself whenever you start talking about Campbell's tomato juice. Well, I'm glad you do control yourself, Ted. That shows that you have the power of mind over tomato. <laughs> Mind over to matter. Yeah. Gracie, did something happen to you when you were a baby? Yeah, um, oh, yes. I weighed 10 pounds when I was born. Oh, then you were born. Yes, yeah. huh? oh, sure. Yeah. And the next week I weighed 20 pounds. 20 pounds. And the following week I weighed 30 pounds. Well, for a while it looked like I was going to grow up to be a Jack Renard. A Jack Renard. <laughs> well, I wish you were a Jack Renard. Then you'd be leading this orchestra instead of bothering me. Sure, and then Jack wouldn't be leading the orchestra and wouldn't be bothering anybody. <laughs> <laughs> something to that. You've got something there, Gracie. Uh, you may not think I'm good, Gracie, but you should see the size of my correspondence. <laughs> see it? Well, how can you miss it? It's taking the buttons off your back. Uh, let me tell you something. Wait until you see how classy Jack Bernard is going to look next week. Yeah. I blew myself to a new suit. You did what? He says he blew himself to a new suit. Oh, now that's a good idea, Jack, because it looks like you're going to blow yourself out of the old one. Uh, uh, Moving. What? Bernard. Yes. This is Ted Husing, ladies and gentlemen. Which kind of tomato juice drinker are you? A dabbler who shifts about and drinks a different brand each time? Or have you given Campbell's tomato juice a try? Taste Campbell's tomato juice. Taste the difference between it and all the other brands you know. For here at last you'll find the honest-to-goodness fresh tomato flavor, just like a tomato you might have picked in your garden last August. No spices or canning processes have spoiled it. It's the real thing. 
you'll get a brand new refreshing thrill from your first glass full. And a real benefit to health, too. Vitamins that Campbell's have taken care to retain for you. Try Campbell's tomato juice. Drink a glass of it just for me or just for George and Gracie. And then another glass just for the joy of it. The Mark Brothers comedy, A Night at the Opera, contains a beautiful ballad entitled Alone. Milton Watson sings it for us now. A million stars that shine and bright that glorify the sky. A million mothers of night are here am I. George and Gracie again. You know, George, if my brother were as rich as Rockefeller, he'd even be richer than Rockefeller and vice versa. Well, that's a nice beginning. <laughs> if your brother were as rich as Rockefeller, he'd even be richer than Rockefeller? Sure, he'd still be getting his $5 relief money on the side. Okay. <laughs> well, which brother is that, sir? My brother Ike. Ike? Yeah, well, we call him Ike for short. His whole name is Hitchike. Oh, Hitchike, yeah. That's yeah. the fool, the good-looking one, yeah. yeah. But when he gets in a car with everybody, he goes 50-50 on expenses. Mm. So your brother goes 50-50 on expenses? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the motorist supplies the gas and oil, oh. and my brother supplies the air and water. <laughs> well, that's very con- that's very considerate of your yeah, brother. Well, I think so. Mm. And once upon a time, while my brother... Uh, goes... Once upon a time? Once upon a time. Well, while my brother was hit yeah. he saw a movie star in an automobile. A movie star? Yeah. Well, what did your brother do? He stuck out his thumb. He did. <laughs> and did the movie star give him a ride? No, he autographed my brother's thumb. Okay. Where's going? Uh, some fun, eh, Gracie? Oh, <laughs> oh that's very good, George. You ought to be in punctures. In punctures, eh? Yeah. George, George, George. Yeah. I've got a opportunity of a lifetime. Opportunity? Oh, Milky, don't take it. My uncle had the same opportunity and he's doing a lifetime. Mm. Gracie, quiet with your uncle. What is it, Milky? Well, James Kling from Paramount is here to look me over. James Kling? Yeah, he's a talent scout. Ah, that's nothing. My daddy's a boy scout. He can make a fire with two sticks. Mm. Yeah. 
Well, what was that? Mixed a fire with two steaks, huh? Please, Gracie, don't mess this up. I may get a contract out of this if I can make an impression. Well, I got... Here comes Mr. Kling now. Oh, Mr. Kling, how do you do? How do you do? Mr. Kling, you know Ted Husing. How do you do? And George Burns. How do you do? And Gracie Gracie Allen. Why, of course, of course. Mm. Well, hello, Mr. Kling. Are you the king of hearts or king of spades? A king of spades. Uh, tell me, Mr. Kling, what's new? I hear you're giving Milton Watson the once over. Well, I happen to be in town, and it just occurred to me that Mr. Watson might have possibilities. You know, he's got possibilities all. Well, now, maybe he ate something that didn't agree with him. I don't <laughs> that talking business. Mr. Kling, did you hear Milton Watson's song tonight? Yes, he has a grand voice. Well, thanks. I can't help wondering how Mr. Watson would be if he were playing opposite Loretta Young. Well, now, look, it all depends on what they'd be playing, Mr. Payne. Now, if they were playing football, I'd bet Milton could be there. <laughs> but he certainly can't play post office, you know what I mean, Milton? Yeah, he knows what you mean. <laughs> but stay out of it. Uh, Mr. Kling wants to find out if Milton can act. Yes, especially in romantic parts. Mr. Watson, have you ever had any of these so-called hot lover roles? Hot well, lover roles? Well, I had them for breakfast and they're delicious. <laughs> uh, Gracie, if I had a girl like you, hot lover alone. <laughs> That was George Burns, ladies and gentlemen. The telephone number is Brian 9 Thanks, Jose. Hello, Gracie. You see, Mr. Kling, uh, I've never done anything very important in that line. Of course, I've taken a lot of work in dramatics. Good. What can you do? Well, I've got uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin in my repertoire. Oh, yeah? Then Jack and I must have the Empire State Building in the end. Please. <laughs> Miss Allen. Wouldn't you like to see Mr. Watson get a chance in a love scene with some beautiful act, Loretta Young? In a love scene with Loretta Young? I know he wouldn't even have a fighting chance. Thanks, Gracie. You're welcome, Elsie. Uh, Miss Allen, you at least admit that Mr. Watson is a good singer. Well, as singers go, what I mean is Milton's low notes are so high that they make his high notes sound low. Hmm. What you mean is that you don't even know what you're talking about. Well, you and Mr. Kling don't know what I'm talking about either, so it's 50 50. I guess so. Uh, uh, Mr. Watson. Will you do some short love scene? Oh, oh, yeah, maybe, and I'll help you. You'll help me? Yes. I'd rather do a love scene with Jack Renard. Why? Why, Gracie, will you stay out of this? Uh, Mr. Watson, right now is the time when we can get an audience reaction. Maybe there's some reading or recitation. Do something. All right, here goes. (laughs) He goes right along, and the world soon forgives and forgets. Give a girl time. Give her a mother juice rhyme. A mother juice rhyme. Now is the time. Why? Yes, rhyme. Uh, mm. uh, Messy Dumpty sat in the wall. Yes. Humpty Wilty yes. had a great fall. All of Spring's love scenes are going to use. They won't be now Messy Wilty from Travel's Tomato Juice Finish. I hope so. You're the Watson Renard. Bernard and his orchestra and a new box box hypnotized. Here's a straightforward proposition. Tomorrow, go to your grocer and say, tomorrow, won't you? And taste the difference. And here's George and Baker. George, I got a letter from home back to me for the New York session. And they're all worried about you. Worried about yes, me? I'll read it to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, dear Gracie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to spell very well. Now you're spelling Gracie. C-R-A-Z-Y. C-R-A-Z-Y. 
Yes, it was, uh, it was probably a slip of the pen. Yes, yes. Then who says that? Who's that? Oh, never mind. Walking. Just read the part where they're concerned about me. Uh, what were they worried about? Your injuries. Injuries? Yes. What kind of injuries? Well, I don't know, but here it is in the letter. It says that, here. Also received George's little check for New Year's, and I hope he didn't break his arm making it out. <laughs> Well, really nice to know that somebody's worrying about me. Sure, sure. Yes, oh, why, Luby, Luby, when did you get back from Hollywood? You look wonderful. You're a down at the parade. The parade. Say, George, Mr. Kling didn't leave. He didn't. He still wants to hear me do a bit of acting. Well, that's fine, but we... He's right in the control room. He is. He's going to listen to us. He wants me to do a scene from Rain. Broadway show, remember? Yes, that's great. Now, mm. Well, here are the scripts. Will you all help me? Oh, we'll be glad to. We'll do the part where I'm converting Sadie Thompson, and I've lost my head. Oh, you lost your head? Oh, well, that's all I know. You'll never miss it. Mm. <laughs> Wait a minute, Milton. Who's going to play Sadie Thompson? Not Gracie, I hope. Yep. She's the only girl oh, here, well. so she'll have to play Sadie. Mm. Play Sadie? Well, I never played it. But if it's like playing a piccolo, I can't play it. <laughs> And if it's like playing a violin, Jack, and I can't play it either. Well, this is going to be fine. If Gracie is going to play Sadie Thompson, then this won't be rain. It'll be Custer's last pie. <laughs> Look, uh, what part do you want me to play? Well, George, uh, uh, you play the old trader who runs the trading post. Okay. Ted, yeah. you do the sound effects. It's supposed to be raining all the time. Well, well I'll be glad to, Milton. Uh, how about Jack? Oh, I'm sorry, but there's no part for Jack. You mean there's no part big enough for that? Quiet, quiet. <laughs> All right, let's, let's get started. Okay, uh, Gracie, look at the script. You're Sadie Thompson, and you're walking up and down your room in a dilemma. In a dilemma? Oh, yes. I don't like that. It's kind of, I look better than a moment. Gracie, you're Sadie Thompson. You've been a bad, wicked woman. A vampire. But you're a fan. Why? Why? Yes. Well, Watson, you better handle it. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the Reverend Davidson, that's me. Yes? I've converted you, Gracie. Yes? You've given up men, yes. and you're through with liquor. Oh. <laughs> Why, you've even stopped playing that nerve-wracking phonograph. Oh, was that a nerve-wracking phonograph? Now, I could have sworn it was Jack and I sang. I could have. Will you try to understand Watson is Reverend Davidson? Yes, and while I'm persuading you to be a good woman, I myself have fallen for you. Oh, boy, this is so sudden, Mary. Who the fuck is you? Oh, yeah. no. Watson, director, Mr. Kling, is waiting. Oh, yeah, Ted. Uh, are, are, are you ready with the sound effect? Well, I've, I've got the water, but I've got no place to pour it. Say, George, have you got a pan? No, I haven't got a pan. You haven't got a pan, George. Well, what do you call that thing between your ears? <laughs> That's, That's a birthday cake. Oh, yeah. That's what that is. <laughs> oh, well. Hey, I've got it. I've got it. Here it is. Rain. Rain. Thank you. It says here, Sadie Thompson comes while she's waiting for Reverend Davidson to knock on the door. Okay, Ted, knock. Go ahead, Gracie, ask. Oh, please. Who's that knocking at my door? Who's that knocking at my door? Who's that knocking at my door? Cry, little Sadie Thompson. Oh, uh, come in. Hello, Reverend Davidson. I'm asking you, Gracie. Gracie, the script. Hello, Sadie. Are we alone? Well, certainly we're alone, baby. There's nobody here but you and me and George and Ted Wilson and the audience and Jack and I. <laughs> I don't say, George. Hey, look, Gracie, read the line. Read the line and it says Sadie. Yeah, uh, uh, Sadie. 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 Yeah, but uh, look, um, what comes after Sadie? Well, we gave it to me. Look, read right here. Yeah, oh, hmm. Oh, Reverend Davidson, I want to tell you you won the battle. I'm going to play. Judge, what is that? You be quiet. Sadie, stop. Tell me no more, Sadie. It's time you heard a confession from me. Why, no, you can't say that in front of a lady. Uh, but then again, I'm Sadie Thompson, huh? Um, well, let's say, baby. Oh, uh, great, Sadie. Your line, your part, your script, your Sadie. I know how, and I'm pretty sure. Uh, what will you read right here? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Mm. So you want to confess to me, Davy? Say, are you kidding me or are you drunk? George, I sound like my mother talking to my daddy. Oh. <laughs> drunk. Drunk. That's it, Sadie. I'm drunk with you. Sadie, you've gone to my head like a drug. My brain is going round and around and around. <laughs> Will you watch 
you slip. You're spoiling Watson's career. Go ahead, Milton. Okay. <clears throat> it isn't the rain that's driving you mad, Sadie. It's you. It's you. Come to me, Sadie. Closer. Closer. Gosh, I'm glad I'm out of this conglomeration. <laughs> Quiet, Jack. Yeah, and that he's in the mood for love. Quiet. Tracy, read this for you. Oh, yeah. Uh, stop, Reverend Davidson. Get away from me. So that's what your face does for you, eh? Are you listening, Mr. Lubitsch? <laughs> Lady Thompson, you can no more stop me than you can stop the rain. Okay. Ted, he didn't tell you to stop the rain. Oh. <laughs> Will you all be quiet? <clears throat> Kiss me, Sadie. I'm only flesh. Oh, baby talk. No, he's getting flesh. Getting flesh. <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Oh, Kling. Mr. Kling, Mr. Kling is terrible, but it's not my fault. Terrible? Why, it was simply wonderful. Wonderful? I've never heard a man read a line with such sincerity. Well, congratulations, Jack. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Oh, that's yours. What's your name right down here, Mr. Jack Renard? Jack Renard? Renard? <laughs> the way he read that line... Gosh, I'm glad if I'm out of this conglomeration. It was beautiful. Mr. Kling, Jack Renard wasn't even in the place. I know. That's why he gets the contract. Oh, <laughs> let me see the contract, Jack. Isn't it the rat? Congratulate Jack, everybody. Yeah. He's going to Hollywood to be a stand-in for a load of hay. A load of hay? <laughs> you think? Mr. She's making a popularity survey. She sings, How Do I Rate With You? Let's cut our own smart off and have a heart to heart talk on the very timely topic of you and me. You tell me all about yourself. Come on, fine. I'll tell you all about myself. I've nothing to hide. I'm in the social reservoir. I'm in the legal field. But say, what I want to know is, how do I raise with you? I miss you with the Vanderbilt. In Dun & Bradford, too. But say, only one thing matters. How do I raise with you? Raise my family tree. That's a fifteen one B three. Say you find a thing or two. But what good is a pedigree when you feel blue? My credit to that symphony. And with the grunts of you. So, babe, won't you tell a fellow, how do I raise with you? How would I raise with you if I wore one of my little blue hats like the little one I have on tonight, Judgey? Please, for cover your brains, if any. Oh, suppose I went in for politics. Gracie Allen for senator. In the state of coma. Would you get your friends to vote for me, even a janitor? Yeah, my janitor would sweep you right in. If I should run for president... I get a bone or two or three or four, but they only one thing matters. How do I raise with you? Do you think I'm the cop or am I the total flop? Do I thrill you when I talk or ooh, 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 would you rather take a walk? I may be tired with Jack Renard. I agree, me. And Milky Milky, too. Don't call me Milky. But, baby, what I want to know is... Yeah, oh, what's the name of the song, Georgie? How do I rate with you? Now, this is Ray Clow. Campbell's tomato juice made by the makers of those fine Campbell's soups. Invite you to listen and laugh with George Burns and Gracie Allen again next Wednesday when they will broadcast from Boston where they are appearing all week starting this Friday at the Metropolitan Theater. Meanwhile, say to your grocer, Campbell's tomato juice, please, and taste the difference. Columbia, what's